Did you know, in the TV series The Walking Dead, the character of Negan can be seen playing Gears of War 2 in a flashback sequence? You're listening to the Xbox Hub podcast, the official podcast of the xboxhub.com. For the latest Xbox news, reviews, videos, and opinions, make sure you visit the xboxhub.com. But for now, settle down, get comfy, and open your ears for some podcast delights. Hello, welcome to the Xbox Hub official podcast episode 190. My name's Gareth Bridey. I'm going to be your host. That doesn't quite work, does it? Um, <laughs> especially as I did it 10 episodes ago, there were 180. Um, I'm, I'm going to be your host. On my virtual left is Mr. Darren Edwards. How are you doing, Darren? Hello, good evening. I know he's, uh, Jim Bowen, bless him, will be turning in his grave if he could hear that now. Be, yeah. um, and on my virtual right is Mr. Paul Renshaw. How are you doing, Paul? Good evening, Gareth. Good evening, Darren. I was just, I was going to ask you how your uh, audition for the uh, role of calling the scores on the telly was going, I know, but not very well. I can speak from that. Not very well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like Rishi Sunak's campaign trail. But that's enough of that. Um, no, no, we listen. Oh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not get started on the politics. Good um, old Rishi, he's been let down by a bunch of idiots. But he's upset. Old, he's upset a woman today. That he gave jobs to. But anyway, uh, we're not going. We won't get into politics. We're, we're what we call we're a partisan. Partisan is that the word? What am I saying? Partisan. That's it. Podcast. Um, let's talk about what we're here to talk about, which is the uh, developers showcase, the Xbox showcase today. But first. Let's find about what we've been doing this week. Paul, what have you been doing? Oh, it's been uh, another exciting week. I've been to London. I've been mm. to Leicester. I've been to Leeds. I've been all over the place this week. Um, and then Close just to record. Yes, Liverpool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, and then just to recover from uh, a hectic week, I've had a day off today, which has been very nice and very strange. I've managed to have a day off without anybody ringing me and that never happens. So, uh, wow. yeah, I'm, I'm loving life at the moment. Okay. When you go to these places, do you sample the, the sort of like the air of the place, the, 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 the romance of the, of the city walks? <laughs> what kind of things do you do? Well, when you go to Liverpool, you try not to breathe too go. deeply. Right. Um, but but uh, street, you certainly do, you don't talk to anyone either, just in case they uh, wet you up and stuff, you know, because you know the people in Liverpool are quite scary. <laughs> Even the guys in the branch that I go and see, it's it's run by a fella, and uh, he's got the biggest hands you have ever seen in your life. Um, wow. It looks like he could just put a basketball in his palm. Um, you certainly wouldn't want to get slapped by him. Let's put it that way. Um, so, yeah, I, I tend not to go and do all the city walks and stuff. I tend to just go down and do the job that I've gone there to do, fix the computers and then run away again back to civilization north of the wall. OK, good, good. It's good to hear. Um, we'd like to apologise to all the listeners from Liverpool. <laughs> Thank you. On behalf of the Xbox Hub team. Um, Darren, what, what have you been doing? I feel like we should get a scratch map and just scratch off the bits that Paul offends and just see what's left around the UK. And that would be very there wouldn't be much, would there? No, there certainly wouldn't. Um, and yeah, I've had an all right week, to be fair. Um, lots of work. I was in Manchester for a couple of days for a meeting, um, which was good. And it snowed as well, so that was exciting. And then it had all melted away by lunchtime. Um, other than that, we went axe throwing last week for a friend of ours for her birthday, which was good fun. Um, and then I've just been watching some telly few things like Dragon's Den, Echo series, but I am obsessed with the traitors at the moment. If you're not watching it, you need to watch it because it's fantastic. Okay. I'm not I'm not watching it. Oh that's great. I refuse. Right. You need to watch it. I really don't. You really <laughs> can do. I, can I just check what sort of meeting lasts two days? Did you I like very... did you like get to go to bed at any time or was it a straight forty eight hour meeting? Oh no, there were they were working hours. Yes, it was a strategy meeting, though. So, okay, lots of strategy involved. Good, so okay. very good. Um, I have been, you know, if you're a freelancer, every point of this year, everyone is frantically trying to do their tax before next week when they and saying <laughs> to themselves at the same time, why didn't I do it four months earlier? Um, and that's half that's my life at the moment. Um, looking through receipts. Crying, 
looking at what I've earned for the year, crying. <laughs> uh, and that's my journey. But I have watched, um, well, last Friday, I watched Killers of the Flower Moon, which just appeared on Apple, the film by Martin Scorsese, um, three and a half hours long. Um, but it doesn't seem like it. It's very, very good. Um, kind of tells a true story of 1920s, 30s, bits of America. Um, I'm not going to say anything about it, really, but it's a it's um, a kind of t- tale of murder and betrayal, and yeah, it's it's it's, it's brilliantly done. Some great performances as well. Um, really enjoyed that. Really recommend that. If you've got Apple, give it a go. Um, but we're not here to talk about films and Paul's work life and Darren's <laughs> axe throw. We're talking about the <laughs> the Xbox Developer Showcase, which we saw last night. We're recording on the Friday now. It was um, an hour long, I think. Um, before we go into detail of each one of the things, do you think it was a successful showcase? We always like to ask Darren, what do you think? I think so, yeah. I think they did a good job of kind of picking some big games that people are anticipating, all due to be a release this year, which uh-huh. I'm sure we'll talk about, um, and getting a bit of a behind the scenes look and a deep dive into each of them. And there was a surprise guest as well. So, yeah, I thought it was pretty good. Yeah, Paul, what about you? You think it was a success? I it, I, yeah, I thought it was great. I'd much rather watch something like that where you've got the guys who were making the game talking about it than listen to Jeff Keighley whittle on for, <laughs> you know, for however long he was on the stage. But yeah, seeing the guys that are making the game and seeing the passion that they've got for what they're doing, I think gives you much more of a sense of anticipation for the game. Yeah. So, I yeah, agree. I, I was very impressed. Yeah, I mean, I that's why I like the Annapurna showcase so much because it's that same format. Um, so I think it works well. Oh, it's yeah. just a shame they don't make any good games. Oh my god! Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> let, let's go through a bit by bit um, of the showcase itself. Um, as you said, we kind of knew it had a at the start of it. We had four little kind of like thumbnails of the four developers we we're going to be going to. Um, and talking about, so we knew exactly what we were getting, first of all. Um, and the first one we went to, of course, was um, is it Obs- it's Obsidian, was it? It was Obsidian, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And we had a look at Avowed, which we saw a little bit of um, in the Xbox showcase in the summer. Um, but we saw a lot more in this. So we saw um, quite a bit of combat. We saw a bit of the worlds, the explosion on what the worlds would look like. And we saw a kind of like a side quest um <laughs> interacting with a character and where the choices would go first of all what's your kind of how do you feel that it looks compared to maybe the summer trailer uh paul what did you think first of all this one i i think it looks really good the work they've done on the world is very good you know the way they were talking about it where you go from places that are quite lush and flowing with water and stuff into a desert and then into corrupted places where it's not so good um, yeah, I thought the world looks fantastic, um, and the the rest of the stuff that they showed, I was really impressed with. I was getting very strong kind of Skyrim vibes from the uh, combat. You know, when you've got when you're dual wielding and you can dual wield wands and shoot magic at enemies and hit them with a big sword. I, I I'm very excited about this. I think it looks really good. Yeah, I think that's a big thing I got out of it with the combat was the idea that you could have a wand, you could have um, a sword, you could have a, a gun, couldn't you? Um, mm, like yeah, they even have pistols, yeah. And you're sort of swapping between those three things um, depending on the fight. And that that's that's really exciting. So you could just like wand someone and then quickly shoot them. It, all that, looked, it looked really fluid and kind of like something they were kind of proud of. Darren, what, did you, were you interested in this? Yeah, I... I'm in agreement with Paul, believe it or not, and pretty much um, My goodness. to the letter. <laughs> I know. I know. Good job we're recording. Um, but I, I know I think it looks um, really, really, really good. And as Paul was saying, the kind of juxtaposition they've gone for on purpose of playing off two environments against each other for contrast is, is, is really effective when you see them kind of side by side. I'd just be interested to see how that flows as you're playing the game as well. Um, but I don't want to put a downer on it, but every time I, I I was watching it and talking about the weapons and the combat, I was thinking, am I going to enjoy it as much as Baldur's Gate 3? And that's the that's mm. the level now, I guess. Is Unfortunately, people are going to be 
naturally kind of comparing it to that. So I think it looks amazing and it's going to be a great game, but hopefully it's not kind of living in the shadow of, of Baldur's Gate 3. Okay, yeah. It, it's a different proposition though, is it not? I don't think... But Baldur's Gate 3 wasn't a first-person game, was it? No, no, it wasn't. But it's the same type of RPG kind of open-world adventure, though, isn't it? Well, yeah, but I think it's quite a lot different from Baldur's Gate 3. Obviously, I'll have to take your word for it because, you know, we've not all played it. But, um, you know, I, 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 don't, I don't think that's a fair comparison. I don't think they're a similar game apart from the fact that there's like fantasy and RPG in it. I know what Darren means. I think when I think one of the things that they showed off was uh, the only downside I would say is when they showed off the the choice of the side quest. It was <laughs> like this is like every other side quest I've been on. It's not there wasn't yeah. anything you mm-hmm. know special from that one. And I think probably and maybe Darren mean, also means that in Borders Gate they do you know they okay. it, it. but I'm with you on the I think the combat is really and the world itself is a really exciting. Mm. Yeah. And I think the, the all, thing is yeah. I mean they did, um Obsidian did um the Outer Worlds as well, didn't they? They did, yeah. And yes. there was a whole yeah. lot of side quests in that game and they were really good. They were very enjoyable. So mm. yeah, I'm I'm quite I'm I'm quietly confident that this is going to be a good game. Yeah. I'm really, no, I'm really I was really excited. I was more excited about it now than I was in the summer, I think, when mm-hmm. I saw it in the trailer. Me too. And yeah. I yeah, don't don't misinterpret my words for putting a downer on it. Um I just yeah, I don't know if I've got the appetite for such a game yet but by the time it's out hopefully hopefully i will do it's all right i'll, I'll review it darren don't you i'm sure i'm sure i'm sure you will <laughs> <laughs> who's reviewing prince of persia for it's not it's not, oh, you. It, it, it's not me it's not your, put it that way not, it might be somebody on this call but it ain't me it's not your year paul you said this last it's, podcast it's really not uh, um yeah i'll play the new chemco game don't you worry yeah, you do that um yeah, it's um, coming out in the fall, so it's coming out in the autumn which is, uh, in this year, mm. which is good. Um, so a big game for then. A few that, there's a f- yeah, there's a few kind of games already, you know, filling the area already in the autumn. Because um, well, we already we've had um, news this week that the um, what's the what's the thing called Stalker Two? That's got a date now. They're coming delayed, but they're saying we've got a date, September the 9th. So they're going to be in the September area. So it's another Game Pass game. Excited for that. Yeah, um, and then we went to uh, Ninja Theory next, and a little kind of um, insight into their making of Hellblade Two, which was the next big reveal. Um, Darren, what was your what was your thoughts on Hellblade Two? So this is one of those games where I love the look of the first one, but I've not played it, which is probably um, kind of in some sort of crime, uh, but. It, it looks, um, yeah, it just looks, I suppose, groundbreaking is the word, really, just in terms of how you got the background into how they create the, the sound and, you know, the voices in Senua's head as well, in terms of what she's going through, psychosis and things. And it just looks, in, I love these type of games, like how they try and use different methods to immerse you in the world. That's why I love Alan Wake 2 so much. And I think you'll probably be on a similar wavelength as me, Gareth. Um so I'm really excited about this, and I'm gonna make sure to play the first one in preparation for the release because I need to I need to get on it. Um, and just the way they were showing us where they got inspiration from all the locations out in Iceland, which is a place I've been wanting to go for years, and I've not not been there yet. It looks brilliant, absolutely brilliant. I know they came out afterwards and said it's gonna have a similar runtime to mm. the first one, which was about seven or eight hours, I mm. think. Um, and I know they were talking in the showcase itself about, oh, you know, we it's a, it's a shorter adventure, um, but it's a it's a very kind of intense, high quality adventure. So I've got no problem with that. Um, it looks brilliant, and it's coming out on the 21st of May, which was probably the biggest reveal of the whole yeah. showcase for me because I wasn't expecting it in the first half of the year at all. So yeah, really excited for this one. Paul, are you tempted now to give this a go? Um, yeah, I mean, I've I've played the first one, mm. and it's probably an even bigger crime to admit that I wasn't massively impressed by it. Um, it would just seemed a bit sort of by the numbers, the actual gameplay for me. Mm. But um, just while Darren's on about going to Iceland, when you go there, make sure you try the salted licorice 
because it's oh. the most amazing thing ever. Oh. When I worked at the company before the one I'm at now, one of the guys there, his girlfriend was from Iceland. And every time they went over, he came back with this salted licorice and it was amazing. Um, mm. So, yeah, try that. Um, but moving back to the game, um, <laughs> the, the thing that impressed me the most was the, I, I, it gave me a whole new respect for what you do, Gareth. You know, the girl that's actually playing Senua mm. when it showed her in the motion capture suit and she was having to react to things that weren't there mm. and do all the combat and everything. I thought that, was amazing. I thought she's doing an absolutely cracking job. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it made me respect actors just that little bit more. And the um, audio stuff is amazing for this. I mean, yeah. in the first game, it was amazing that you were, you were playing the audio, that all the voices were coming through your head or if you were in headphones. And now they're doing it with all the soundtrack as well from this thing. It mm. just looks like they're... I think it, I think it's good. I think it's, I think, Paul, I think you're fair to say what you said about it. I think a lot of people, when it came out, Hellblade, the first one, it wasn't brilliantly received, you know, as a critically, I think. It was like, it was probably getting maybe a lot of three stars, maybe three and a half stars, or, um, and I think people found the, found the, you know, the world and her and the journey amazing, and it looked amazing for that game then. But I think the combat in that time got a bit, people felt it was a bit repetitive and it didn't have enough, um, variety in the thing so it'd be interesting because they did talk about that then they said so they reworked that combat so it'd be yeah. interesting to see where that goes and it's going to look amazing but it's yeah i think it's going to be we're going to get it on game past and i i think it's only it's coming it's it's like 50 dollars if you haven't got game pass so it's going to come in maybe just 40 quid i think the last the first one was about 32 quid when it got released and then so 40 quid for that shorter experience but yeah really really exciting it's great so we've got to mm. for that They've mm -hmm. said um, it's going to be um, digital only, though, haven't they? As yes, well? they have. Yeah. Which has caused some discussion yeah. once again, like Alan White too. It did. The first one was digital only as well, and then it, then they did a release, a hard copy release later on. But oh, yeah, it'd be interesting if they do that this time around. But yeah, it's um, May twenty first. Big big Game Pass game. Um, the next one was a bit of a cheeky kind of reveal. There's suddenly a new developer popped up. We had this sort of error <laughs> notice. Someone's evading, and then uh, Square Enix uh, appeared as the developer. Now, my first instinct with this, because there was kind of rumours of the um, Final Fantasy Online game. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, that was coming up as a rumour <laughs> that it got, and then it got taken down, didn't it? That the Xbox version. That's what yep. I thought. Is this it? Um, but no, it was. Uh, was it called Visions of Manor? Visions yes. of Mana, yeah. Has anyone played these Mana games? I'm not, I don't remember yep. them. What do you think? Yeah. You, yeah? I, the, they were fantastic. Ah. This, this was back in the day. I think I played the, them on the, uh, it was the, either the Game Boy Advance or the, uh, or it might even have been on the first DS. But yeah, I've played the, uh, I've played all of the Mana games, I think, and really, really enjoyed them. They were very, very good RPGs. Obviously not as good as Baldur's Gate 3, but, you know, just before Darren gets going. Um, wow. But of their time, they were fantastic. They were easily as good as the Final Fantasy games of that time. Wow, okay. Um, it did look like a game. I mean, it did look very pretty. It did look like a game of its time. Mm -hmm. For me, not playing it, it, was, it, was, well, it I didn't it, get excited. Yeah, obviously it's changed a bit since the classic games. Mm. It's now gone 3D and open world and stuff, but mm. Yeah, I mean, the design of the monsters and everything. You had that fella on chatting away about he did the monsters for the first one and then he had to change them to make them 3D and stuff for the new games. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, it just look, it looks great. It's very action-oriented from what I can see, um, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. I do miss a turn-based RPG these days, though. It all yeah. seems to be everything's moving over to action. You know, like just Final a suggestion Fantasy 15. For you. Have you? Is it Baldur's Gate 3? <laughs> it is, yeah. No way. Yeah. I, I swear you're getting some kind of kickback from Larry, and aren't you? Is that what it is? <laughs> getting one of those suits of armor. You've come here. Yeah. <laughs> is that just when you go home? Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. You know what it's like. <laughs> well, anyway. Uh, yeah, so I'm quite excited about this. I think it looks very good. And with such a strong pedigree behind it, it's got the potential to be something very good. Good. Now, one of you is crackling away. I can hear you. Don't move. That's it. Good. Better. <laughs> better. better. Uh, uh, don't move. Don't breathe. Don't breathe. Yeah. Um, 
Darren, what do you think of the dog creature? There's a little thing you ride on based on a Yorkshire Terrier and something else. <laughs> That's a very specific <laughs> question. I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> uh, a, dog, a dog creature is fine, but I think um, I agree with Paul. I, I grew up around Nintendo games and before the Xbox was released, that was kind of my, I was a big Nintendo fanboy back in the day of SNES, Game Boy Advance, you know, DS, GameCube, stuff like that. And the Mana series always had a home on those consoles. Um, so I'm I'm not as familiar as Paul with them, but I have played them. And I think it's great, but I think what it represents is also quite exciting for Xbox because there's been talk about the relationship with Square Enix being up and down and they've kind of, you know, made friends again with all the rumours of Final Fantasy coming over. So I think it's a good sign of what's to come with that partnership as well. Um, so it's not the game I would most be anticipating from Square Enix, but I think it's a, a sign of good things to come, hopefully. Good, yeah. Um, yeah, it's not, Yeah, it, I mean, it looks fine. It's going to be a really good... It's a summer release, it looks like, whatever that means. Um, but yeah, it's a... It's it's just a type of game that we haven't got that many of, so I think it's quite exciting for Xbox. But yeah, um, then we went on to Oxide Games um, for Aria: History Untold, which is a uh, strategy game, very much in the lines of um, what's the Empire game called? You all like Age of Empires? Um, has oh, that yes. feel to it? Darren, you you like the look of this, don't you? I do like the look of this because it's um, it's. Uh, from the people who worked on Civilization Five, um, so that's also a big fan favorite in in the strategy world. Um, I think it's interesting because it's not it's not the same as Age of Empires in terms of loads of different settings and times, whereas Age of Empires is kind of normally each game is set in one period. But there's a procedurally generated Earth as well. Um, mm. so, uh, so there's like a crafting system you can play as different leaders from from kind of all sorts of corners of history so it looks like it's quite a chunky game it's not just straightforward play from the start of one era to the end um so i'm i'm really looking forward to this i feel like it could be a bit of a bit of a cult favorite with fans yeah i i really i, I really like the look of this kind of world i think there's just the design and how they've done the menus and how the it, they have this idea called living world, don't they? So it's just like, mm. um, it's just has this world that's just carrying on. The creatures are carrying on, they're doing their thing. They, they were talking about they had one problem with cougars <laughs> that were attacking oh, everything. Yeah. That's a thought. Oh, yeah. Yeah, um, There's always problems with cougars. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> <laughs> it's family podcast. But I, lo- I like the way it kind of moves through history. So you're going quite up to modern day as well. Do you like the look of this, Paul? Nope. No, not for you, is it? No. <laughs> it's, uh, it's not for me. No, yeah. I'm not a. I don't. I don't do Age of Empires, and I don't do Civilization Five. And while I can see the amount of work that they're putting into it, and how much they want this game to work, it was just, yeah, it's not my cup of tea. Yeah, fair enough. I thought yeah. I thought it was the weakest of the five. To be fair, fair enough. But I think for strategy people, I mean, the, the only thing I would say is those menus they had up on the screen looked complicated. And I'm thinking, how's the console going to work with this? Mm-hmm. That was the only one. That was the only <laughs> thing I thought. I think Age of Empires 4 done a, has done an amazing job. I've played quite a bit of that now. Um, so hopefully they've learned from that. But yeah, it did look, wow, there's a lot going on here. Mm. Um, good. That's coming out in the fall of 2024. So another one for the autumn. Um, a big game, and then we had the last one, um, which we all knew was coming, but we didn't know how much we'd see of it. And it was Machine Games who had done Wolfenstein games, and it was the Indiana Jones game. And we know it's called Indiana Jones and the Grand Circle. I've got that right. The Great Circle. The Great the, Circle. The Grand Circle is somewhere I go. The Grand Circle is go yeah, away from my ballroom dancing. Um, a peek into your lavish lifestyle. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> yes. Let's go to the Grand Circle, darling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we saw Indiana Jones ballroom dancing in the Grand Circle. No, in the Great Circle. <laughs> um, but we saw a little. We saw a trailer. Um, all this kind of massive adventure that's going to take him around the globe with a new kind of enemy. Um, it's set between Raiders of the Lost Ark and The Last Crusade um, in that kind of universe. And it's first person for most of it. Um, let's just talk about that first of all. We we all thought this was going to be first person, didn't we? Good at the machine game. Paul? 
um, I didn't know too much about this, I'm ashamed right. to say. Um, but obviously, with it being machine games, um, that's what they're good at. I mean, the Wolfenstein games are very, very good. So, yeah, it makes perfect sense to do it like that, because then you you are indie, aren't you? So, yeah, I, I don't have any problems with that. Did you like it? Looking at I did. I did like it. Yes, I, w- I was very impressed. I liked the way that the whip was used. I liked the sneaking about bit, and then shooting Nazis in the face, or punching <laughs> them, or hitting them around the back of the head with a shovel. Uh, yeah, I'm all on board. Anybody who wants to punch a Nazi is all right by me. <laughs> uh, what about you, Dan? What was your, what impressed you most about this trailer? Or did it? Um, yeah, no, I I really liked it. I mean, I, I'm a big fan of Indiana Jones anyway, and they're definitely going for the the first and the third films kind of feel. Um, maybe harshly, completely ignore that Temple of Doom comes in the middle of those two, but we'll go into that. Um, so I think it ticks all the boxes that Indiana Jones fans have won. I think the first person thing is interesting because I was watching it with Ryan and he said, "Oh no, it's first person." I said, "Well, well, what, what's wrong with that?" So oh, it should be third person, like. Resident Evil and stuff like that. I said, but it's not the same type of game. I think the the devs were saying they want you to kind of be as close to the action as possible, mm. and I'm I think that's a good decision. I mean, you know, I can think of um, situations, especially bits in the trailer where you're solving puzzles or you're hanging onto the sides of ledges or using your whip to climb walls, where that's a little bit more immersive. But then it does zoom back out for some of those as well, so you do get a bit of the third person they were saying to set up those iconic shots whether he's mm. standing in a clearing or it zooms out a bit when he is climbing the wall with his whip so <clears throat> i think it's a good hybrid and the whip itself they were saying that's central to what he does so you can use it as a weapon you can use it to get around the environments which is which is really good because that's his kind of signature kind of signature tool i guess um and it's interesting they've got the likeness of harrison ford but it's troy baker who's releasing him isn't amazing it? and we that yeah. we didn't we didn't know that until after no and you're like i was going he's doing a really good harrison ford impression yeah <laughs> and it was yeah. like yeah and it's troy Baker doing it, of course that's amazing yeah, yeah it sounds great it's got harrison ford's looks um, of it course does. yeah so it's canon because it's in the timeline which mm. is good um so i think they're they're looking to make it the the genuine article. So, yeah, my only, I don't know if it's just me being hypercritical, some shots it looked a little bit jagged or it looked a, like some shots it looked really impressive and others not so polished. But I guess it's not coming out till the end of the year, is it? Mm, or some yeah. point this year. We haven't got a no. specifics. They've got plenty of time. But to commit to this year, I do hope it comes out this year, but I've got a tiny little bit of me that thinks, will it come out this year? But that might just be me being yeah. harsh. No, no, you could be right. Um, I think I think what Machine Games does really well is they do a really good, you know, with the Wolfenstein game, especially those first two re- um, remakes of that franchise. They were like these amazing kind of like cinematic games. And it does feel mm. like, a, and with amazing kind of action set pieces. And I think that's what made me feel, oh, okay, you're going to save hands here with this story. But I, I know what you mean. There was bits of it. I was like, hmm. Yeah, but it's like you said, they've got loads of time for that to polish those bits up. Mm. <laughs> I like the way they went, and here then he goes to the Himalayas, a drawing of the Himalayas. Yeah, yeah, I was, and yeah then yeah. I was thinking, this uh, that's what I thought this game ain't coming out this year. That's exactly <laughs> what I thought. I thought, well, maybe not. <laughs> yeah, um, but I think they're probably gonna aim for it. But yeah, it looks really good though, it looks really exciting. I think people, I think it's gone down well with people, and they it's really. I think so. Got excited about that. It helps because the last couple of films haven't been great. Like Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, the the fourth one, just went a bit wacky at the end. Mm. And the latest one, it started off well and it kind of fizzled out for me. So I think this is an opportunity to give the the fans something that um, kind of... I don't know, round it off a little bit more. Oh, it might have you might have a series of games. You know, I think that's probably mm. what they're looking for. Maybe one or two or three of these kind of like games with, you know, if they if it's successful. Um, oh God. That was the um, showcase. Um, that was right. Wasn't it? There was a little showcase. I liked it. There was a bit, only four or five, five games. That was it. Mm. Obviously, there's a lot more to come in the year, but you know, it's got your appetites waiting. But what have we been playing? in the last kind of week it's quiet in january but we have been playing some games um paul what have you got maybe we'll... um 
in, one, in a change to yeah. the um, the published schedule, hmm. I'm going to talk about a game I've just started playing today. And it's one that I mentioned last week that I was quite excited about playing, and that's Pal World, oh, that's which crap. has just come out on... Um, yes. It's come out on sort of a game preview on Game Pass today. And so far, I'm enjoying it. Um, it's a hybrid of kind of Minecraft, Fortnite, Breath of the Wild and Pokemon. And it's a survival game where you have to, if you want to catch one of these pals, they call them, you've got to go and batter him into submission <laughs> and before you throw the thing at him to catch it. So you've got to sneak up on these animals with a big club in your hand and beat them to death, well, almost to death, oh, and, then, and then catch them. Wow. Um, and then once you've done that, you can sort of, you can assign one of these things to be your little helper at your base that you've made. And when you want to build something, it comes and helps you. It gets its own little hammer and stuff. It's really, really quite cute. Um, apart from the battering. Apart from the battering. Um, but then, you know, I thought, I thought I'd chance my arm. I think I was about level eight or nine at the time. And I saw a level 15 monster and I thought, right, I'll have some of that. Um, went over there, started battering it with my club and it just went, it didn't think so and killed me in one hit. <laughs> so, yes, oh, yeah. unlike Pokemon, you don't faint and scurry off to the Poke Center to recover your creatures. Um, you get killed. <laughs> so, <Right. laughs> um, it's a third person thing. It looks really good. The creatures are really cute. They do remind me a lot of Pokemon, but, you know, I'm sure the lawyers have had a look and said it's fine. Um, <laughs> but so far, so good. I'm really quite enjoying it. Oh, good. It is having a lot of um, press at the moment, people mm -hmm. saying it needs to be, the lawyers need to be on it. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> uh, some people talking about waiting times, you know, two to three, it's, it's, it's got people waiting two to three hours to get on the game. Oh, I've not had that. Yeah, no. maybe it's on Steam. Um, yeah, but yeah, I, I'm going to give it a go. I'll download it, give it a go. I'm curious. I think you should. Um, I'll, in, I'll invite you to my world. Oh, yes, please. To your world. Oh, my Get God. Off. I know. Welcome uh, to my world, Gareth. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. I'm sinister. Wow. <laughs> um, Darren, what have you been playing? Uh, I was just going to ask Paul a question, if that's all mm. right. Yeah, um, go ahead, Frank. Uh, at what point do they become your pals then? Is the message you have to beat them so got, they become your yeah. friends? Or yeah, okay. Well, you've got you've got to beat them, and then you've got these things that are like that are in bear a resemblance to a pokeball, shall we say? Um, right. Pokeball. Yeah. Or... No, they're called pal pal orbs. I think. Oh, right. Okay. I'm pal something anyway, and then you once you've got the health down it's a lot like pokemon you have to get the health <laughs> down <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then you get the health down somehow except you do it yourself rather than getting a pokemon to do it for you and then you right. chuck the ball at them and it captures them and then after that they're your best friends they seem to forget <laughs> that you've just beaten them bloody with a big stick yeah. um yeah so <laughs> Blimey. what's that sin what's Thank that you. what's that syndrome called with the kidnappers stockholm yeah it's that yeah. yeah, it is. Yeah. You pick them in a ball and yeah. then let them out, and they're ever so grateful. So, yeah. Um, wow. Darren, what have you, what's your game? Uh, so, I've been playing a bit of Payday 3. Oh my God. Um, so, we, um, I'm tasked with reviewing it, um, and I've asked for some help, which I've not received yet, but I'm sure I will. Um, <laughs> Can I just say, you asked for help on Thursday night when it is Forza night. I can't yeah, no, do anything on Thursday apart from play Forza Horizon 5. That's uh, No, that's my bad. That's fair enough. Thanks. Um, so, Penny 3 has been out since, I want to say, August, September mm. time. Um, and essentially, for those who don't know, it's first-person shooter. And the aim of the game is for you and your heist squad to go and steal loads of money um, by whether it's fighting off hordes and hordes of army um troops and police officers and breaking into banks and, and all sorts um however it's one of those games where i've not played loads of it i just played a few hours but already it kind of feels like what you see is what you get and that's pretty much it 
um as kind of when you when you boot it up so even though it's billed as kind of online multiplayer and you you match make in lobbies and you play with other people online you can play yourself um if you stick yourself in a private room and, and just you can get bots to play with you as well um and then you choose different scenarios and then you can go along and choose the little cutscenes to kind of join them up but you kind of have free choice for the first few and then you unlock more as you go I mean, that's pretty much all there is to it, to be honest. I know it hasn't had the best critical reception, but it's good, mindless fun for a bit. But it is, um, it does get quite repetitive quite quickly. Mm. But I've, I've got to obviously play a lot more and gather my thoughts and get some, some helpers involved. But yeah, that's a long and short of it, really. Looking forward to that, Paul. Good night. Oh, I, I, I lit the words cannot express how much I'm looking forward to that, Barry. But I, I did tell him that any time a game involves running around and shooting, that you were the go-to man. No, I'm not. I'm, not, I'm the walking sim man, as we know. <laughs> it is on a game pass as well, oh. so it's probably a good thing um, with it with it relying on a healthy online um, presence. To be fair, I didn't have trouble matchmaking, so that's a good sign. That's People good. are playing it still. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, I was going to I was going to ask that with it being out so long, has it died off yet? But yeah, no, I mean, obviously not. No, unless I just got lucky with when I was playing it, but nothing noticeable. No, great, good. Um, I think the developers have come out and apologised for something. Maybe the game. I can't remember this week. I saw something. They were apologising. It's not what they have a look for it somewhere. They were saying it's not what we we apologise to everyone. It's not what we intended to do. I don't know. But have a look. Yeah, they're, they're apologising already. Maybe because it had it's had quite a crit- not a very good critical reception. Um. Good. I've been playing Prince of Persia: The Lost Crown. Um, I remember playing this, playing the first Prince of Persia back in 1989 on the PC. Ran a friend. Oh, God, yeah. it was dreadful, wasn't it? Oh, it's oh, good. It's not aged well. I hated it. It hasn't aged well, no, it well but at that time, it was great. You know, um, it used it was a kind of like single developer. I think it was using rot- rotoscoping, which is like. Um, you know, filming someone that at the time I think the developer filmed their brother doing all the kind of moves or like jumping and stuff and then put that into the character of the game. Um, and it has, it uses that as an influence. I mean, I think I said in my review, Prince of Persia has been a sort of like, it's had a much more flashier cousin, which is the Assassin's Creed, <laughs> who've come along and taken over its crown, really. Especially, it hasn't really had a game since 2008 or 2000 six seven around that time um and this time they've sort of gone back to the kind of old 2d world um it's a metrovania game so you're it follows the kind of like prince but the follows his character not prince Persia, but follows his character first of all who's part of this group called the immortals and there's seven sort of characters they're like the avengers and it's like it's almost like a saturday morning cartoon they come they've all got different abilities and powers and this prince of persia he has been kidnapped by um someone very close to him and you go to this um area and try to get him back and this area has got a sort of like problem with time and this is where the sort of time dilation comes and you're trying to explore it and trying to rescue the, the prince and then the story unfolds from there. But the main thing about the game, it has that metro thing about combat. So the combat is really fast, it's really kind of furious, you're kind of getting skills as you go along, you've got amulets to collect that can give you um, extra powers or might take away certain powers at the same time. So it's all about you getting your right loadout for the right kind of like battle, boss battles galore. Exploration, you have the choice at the start of the game whether to have the the markers where to go switched off or you just go completely like into this map world. Don't do that, you'll just get lost. Um, <laughs> and uh, it's this kind of huge world. And then, of course, you've got the, the, the sort of traps and puzzles. So you might have something with loads of kind of like things to navigate where you're sort of jumping and zipping off different walls at the same time as well as fighting something, um, using your powers to kind of zip around almost like an Ori game or something like that when you really have to be on the, on the mm. platform. But it feels and plays brilliantly. It feels really exciting to play. It looks has that kind of cartoony world, which is really, really nice. My only criticism of the game is, is I think it's too long. About 20 hours long. Yeah. And it's yeah. um, it could be trimmed a little bit. 
<laughs> down. <laughs> I think it's an Ubisoft problem. I think they always go on a little bit too long. That was my only thing. But I, everything else, I just think it's great. I, I haven't really played a game like this for a while. Maybe Ori and the Blind Forest is the last one I kind of played. That kind of metro and you're sort of like, it's map. You can, it's finding areas that you like and then you go, I can't do anything with that yet. I'm going to have to come back when I've got a skill like five hours later and you do it and then you find this kind of secret. Um, mm. Yeah, it's. I think it's. it's gone down very well with people. I think it's a nice start to the year. Something a bit different, something a bit fun, very arcadey. Yeah, really enjoyed it. I think I've given it a 4.5. <gasps> How oh, dare you? I know. Give it a poor score. Oh. <laughs> um, there you go. Um, do you want to talk about any other games over here? Yeah, can do. Well, yeah, we're do here. another yeah, one. Well, yeah, let's do know, another one each. Got, got 20 minutes to kill. Well, we? so, I'm uh, yeah. <laughs> breaking the fourth wall. I've got a little bit on Payday 3 um, when you mentioned earlier. Yeah. So they've apologised for um, uh, keep they keep delaying a patch, apparently. Apparently it's quite a big patch, the first patch, and it hasn't made it because there's been some feedback around the progression system. Right. So, of course, because it's a online multiplayer game, you earn experience and unlock different um, items and all that business. So they've said something along the lines of, um, we need to be more transparent. We'll do our best to win back your trust. And they're working on the patch. That's what they've said. All right. There you go. Um, there you go. Brilliant. Right, Paul, what are you going to talk about? What's your other last uh, thing? I'm, I'm also going to talk about a Metroidvania and one that, I was completely surprised by. I had no idea this game existed until I played it. Um, it's called Cookie Cutter, and it's a platformer. And obviously, from the name, you'd think, oh, it's going to be all cutesy, and you know, you'll be looking for ingredients for a biscuit or something. Um, but it's really not. You are an android called Cherry, and the woman that created you. Um, who just so happened to be the love of your life, hmm. has been kidnapped uh, and you've been left for dead. And then you have to go and try and obviously find you find this, this woman so you can be together again. And the style of the game is fantastic. It looks completely hand-drawn. It's incredibly violent. Cherry is a dab hand at the old martial arts and um, absolutely batters any creatures that she comes across. <laughs> um, there's so much blood, you'll feel like you need to put your waders on. Um, it's absolutely brilliant. I loved it. Um, you've got places to explore. And it's like you said with Prince of Persia or with Ori, you'll get to a place and you won't be able to do anything. So you have to go somewhere else get a new power, such as a double jump, say, and then come back and you can move on in the other section. Um, it's brilliantly well done. It looks fantastic. It plays really, really tightly. Um, and I absolutely love my time with the game. I also gave it a four and a half out of five. Wow. <gasps> and it did cause a bit of upset on Twitter, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> as well, because the developer read the review and thought that I'd given it four and a half out of ten. So, <laughs> so he was <laughs> was he happy. He wasn't happy, no. And then sort of the the Xbox Hub social team had to go back and go, no, no, no. It was four and a half out of five. It was nine out of ten or ninety out of a hundred wow. sort of thing. And then he was like, oh, okay then. <laughs> That's funny. That so that funny. made me smile. Yeah, so. I like that. Oh, good. See, see, good. Nice. We got a couple of positive responses to games at the start of the year. What about you, oh, Darren? Have you got another good one? Um, <clears throat> so the next one I've been playing is Tools Ultimate Edition. So we've reviewed the base game back in 2019, I think it came out. And then the DLC came out a couple of years afterwards, which I reviewed. Um, and the Ultimate Edition is essentially just those two things packaged up. Um, we, although there is a, a PvP mode which they've chucked in as well. Um, <clears throat> so how it works is it's a bit of a home makeover game, but in the style of Overcooked or one of those type games. So you're against the clock, although you can choose to take the timer away if you want to, and you have to either lay down new flooring or paint the walls um, and basically get the house looking to 
how it looks on the blueprint. Um, but it's not as simple as that, of course. You might have to clean up and take things out to the bin first, or you'll get the paint and stuff kind of delivered at intervals throughout the mission. Um, and then you have to organise where you're going to go and how you're going to get it all done in time. So it is quite fun. It's quite basic, but it is quite fun. Um, and they do layer on more complicated um, kind of tools to use. So if you need to like plaster a wall or whatever, you'll need to get the material and tip it into the bucket before you then take it out and start hitting the walls rather than just painting straight from the paint tin. So it adds like another step and makes it a bit more complicated that way. Um, however, as I say, it's all stuff that's been released before pretty much. Um, apart from this PvP mode. So the PvP mode um, is essentially where you just race to complete the tasks against each other, but you can kind of sabotage each other. Um, so I've not um, I've not given that one a whirl just yet, um, but that sounds like it could be quite fun. But otherwise, it's all stuff that's been released before, really. So it doesn't feel like a, um, a massively new experience, for being honest. You've not had a good week of okay. games. No, no, I think um, I might just go back and play Baldur's Gate 3, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah. is the benchmark yeah. now for every that, game that's ever released. For everything, every yeah. single game. Uh, no, but um, <laughs> I did, I did, I did enjoy it the first time round. It was, you know, it was good fun. It was, it was nothing too taxing. It wasn't, it wasn't anything to near the stress levels of Overcooks because that can get pretty stressful. Um but yeah, it's just the same stuff repackaged, broadly speaking. Mm. Yeah, well, okay, good. Oh well, that's, um, that's, a, that's depressed us. Um, I'm still playing Starfield. Um, I'm now I've played it for oh, two, two days. <laughs> you told me, which depressed me. Um, <laughs> uh, two days you've been playing this game. Two whole days, Jesus. Um, but I have reviewed a game called Barton Lynch Pro Surfer. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Any questions? Uh, uh, who's Barton Lynch? Well, I don't know. I don't quite know. <laughs> did Did you manage to hang ten? Good buddy and all that stuff. Yeah. Very good. Power bunga. It's Power a, the kids again. It's a surfer <laughs> game. It's a it's a simulation Never. surfer game. Yeah, it's a simulation surfer game. It's probably the best surfer game on the market. If you because there isn't that many. I was uh, going to say, is there only one? But it does do everything. You know, if you're into your surfing, you kind of like got to get the right angle on the board, you've got to hit the wave at the right time, you've got to do tricks, you go into a world tour, um, <laughs> um, you try to, with three other, four other surfers at the same time, try to get more points. Um, you've got a free mode, you can just surf and hang around on the beach if you want, um, buy stuff for your character. Yeah, it's a, it's a, if you're into your surfing, this is the game for you. If you're not into surfing, look away. Just look away. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to get the image of you in a wetsuit out of oh, my head. At the oh, I go, go. I'll so, share a picture of you with me in a wetsuit. I did an advert for a friend for the World 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 Wildlife Fund, and I'm in a wetsuit. It's not a good look. I, I've, nice. I'll, I'll dig that picture out for you, just for you. I can't point. wait. We have wow. to share it on the socials. Uh, we will do. Yeah. Um, Put it on Bebo. Yeah. Um, Put it on threads. <laughs> Put it on threads. <laughs> Listen, thread is, get it going is, again. Yeah. is going weird. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure about threads anymore. No, oh, it's no. very, very right on. Right. So, not for you, but we get back on Twitter. Be, well, no, you, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm all about the, the right on this. There's nobody more woke than me, Gary. Yeah. Get you back on Twitter, Paul. That's your home. Yes, I think you uh, might be right. Yeah. Um, Let's just have a brief talk about news. There isn't much at the moment because we just had the big thing. There's um, Elder Ring um, rumours still all the time about new DLC coming. It's going to come. Hooray. It's going to come this year, isn't it? It's got to come. This it year. is. Yeah. Yeah. Battle of the Erd Tree. Can't wait. Um, game. I'm very sad about this game. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm the last um, person to use game. Um, game had season to do trade-ins. I think from February. That's the kind of rumour they said in the next couple of months. Yep. So um, I, I I can confirm I have had an email from them saying I think it was the 16th of February we're going right. to stop doing trading. I mean, it's an end of an era. It's probably I'm quite sad about it because it, I still do tradings, but yeah, not. But I mean, I can't understand then why this is a good business model. Yeah, because surely then anybody that wants to get rid of games is just going to go down to their local branch of CEX. 
Mm. Well, you know who owns it, don't you? Who owns CEX? No, no game. Oh, yeah, it's that uh, Sports Direct fella, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, I mean, if, you, if you've been into a game shop recently, half of it is just gaming merchandise now. Yeah. I think they've yeah, realised that they've got because... to diversify to take money. Yeah. Mm. yeah, there's a lot of Lego in these shops as well. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I remember the days when there used to be a game store. So, mm. but, you know, and you used to be able to go and buy second-hand things. That's, I mean, that's Gareth's livelihood. I mean, is, this, yeah. When he's not acting, this is how he makes his money buying and selling games. <laughs> so, God <laughs> knows what he's going to do now. It's a really bad model because I'm actually always <laughs> making a loss. <laughs> um, and also, there's been an interesting thing on this kind of subject. Um, that one of the execs from Ubisoft had said um, gamers need to get comfortable not owning their games for the script to take off. But there is this whole thing about us all going digital and not having this kind of hard copy or this collector's items or, you know, it's... Do, what do we think? Do you think? I mean, it's hard for us because we review a lot of games, so everything, we, most of our stuff is on digital anyway, so, because it's from codes. But do you, what do you think about this idea that actually are we just going away from this idea of you now just, there's no hard, we're just going to be buying stuff from the store? Okay. Mm, I know Darren's going to uh, kick off about that, but I mean, apart I, from yeah, it makes me uncomfortable. yeah, apart from like super limited edition things. I mean, I was looking at the Tekken Eight Super Duper Collector's Edition the other day. I think it's about best part of three hundred quid, but you get like a massive statue and everything else. It looks really good. Um, mm. Apart from that, I don't see the need for a disc. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I've moved away largely now. I've still got a few on my shelf of, like, favourite games that I don't want to get rid of. But buying them digitally, they, they, they work just the same, don't they? Without having to get off the settee and swap the disco. And I think also they're talking about as well, you know, I totally agree, it's, it's talking about the subscription service. I mean, in terms of films and TV, we're we're very much into that, aren't we? Just the script yeah. service, rather yeah. than owning stuff. Possibly, I think I used to own stuff, but now I don't have anything. But now I, I've got many subscriptions to TV stuff that I can probably find something or something I've seen before in one of those. So, I, I think in, I think their point is we're more comfortable with that when we're watching that kind of media content. We need to get more comfortable with that in a gaming sense. I mean, he's trying to sell Ubisoft Plus and. It was soft <laughs> subscription as well. What are you saying? This, but it's it's a it's a key thing. Do you think we will get to a point where it's just all subs? You know, we're going to just have subscriptions, not even codes we buy. Darren, uh, I mean, naturally, as you said, Gareth, like, naturally, I do have a lot more games on digital because of, of of how we get them and we review them. But I do still like some. If I'm a real kind of fan of certain series, I do like to own it physically because the other side of it is it uh, it brings up questions around preservation and if you like something on a streaming service or you know on a on a gaming street uh, um, subscription service it could just be delisted mm. and then you'd never be able to play it again and you talk about discs and getting up and swapping the discs but actually these days as i've said you have to install it you have to patch it you have to have hard drive space so it's not as easy as it used to be I know the trade-off is we've got more bigger and better games, arguably. Um, but it's not... I, I think it's just worrying because it makes it sound like Ubisoft to position themselves to kind of force people down that road before maybe they're ready. Mm, mm. And yeah. they are a bit out there sometimes, so I won't put anything yeah, past they're, them. <laughs> they're perhaps going to have to wind the necks in a little bit once they get going because I don't think that they've got enough strong games to sell the Ubisoft Plus over something like Game Pass, you say, for instance. So, I mean, the Far Cry games, I like those. I've got those on disc. The rest of it, I'm not bothered about. Assassin's Creed, meh. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, there you go. But that's, that's it. I mean, Prince of Persia, the new one, I might get that. But, you know, if Gareth can do it, it can't be very challenging. So No, it's not challenging. I mean, it is challenging, no, it really is challenging. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, I was forgotten about how challenging, especially after 10 hours. God, it does get mad after that. Um, 
Yeah. Well, okay. That's interesting. We'll see what happens. I mean, it's I have a heart attack, I think, on that point every time with um, Spotify because I have a lot of stuff on Spotify that's for work. And my I always say, why don't they just wake up one day and say Spotify's gone bust? And that's it. And I lose everything, you know, because I don't own any music anymore. Yeah, interesting. Mm, that, interesting. That, that would be a worry. Yeah. Can you not back it up in some way, shape, well, or I form? Well, just buy it of something. Where, where would you buy it now? I don't know. How do you buy music? HMV. Finals? Yeah, HMV. Yeah, maybe, yeah. CDs still, still got quite a big CD section in our ones. I haven't got, got a CD player. What? That's true. Laptops don't have disk yeah, drives anymore. Yeah, I guess. Don't have anything. Yeah. Everything is on um, the car, maybe. Yeah, the car hasn't got anything. The car. I can't even got a CD drive in the car. No. What? Well, I've got, got you haven't got a CD player in the car. I've got one in mine. Well, it's I've great. Got, I've got a new I've car. got an MP, it'll play MP3s as well. I've got like a memory stick <laughs> in the car that it does. But yeah, <laughs> it's, it's nice to have a CD. Yeah. No, I've, got, mm. I've got no CDs. I've got rid of them all. Um, there we go. That's uh, cheerful. End to the podcast. <laughs> what will the future be like? Did you get rid of all these to try and pay your tax bill? Yes. <laughs> yeah. We're going to have to sell everything. It's all going. The dog, the lot. <laughs> Everything's gone. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Oh, no. So true. Um, what are we looking forward to next week, chaps? Um, Paul, what are you looking forward to? Um, well, I'm taking the boy camping tomorrow with scouts. Luckily, I don't have to go and sleep in a tent in oh, sub-zero God. temperatures. It's cold. It's, it, yeah, it's, it's um, week, this know. one... This camp is uh, Builder's Chili Camp. And last year when he went, when we went to pick him up, there was snow on the tent and it was frozen solid. So, yeah, I'm sure he's going to have a great time. Wow. Um, I'll be sat in my nice warm bed laughing. <laughs> um, but other than that, all I've got on the horizon is yet more work and uh, possibly a trip to the NEC to help set up a trade show. Ooh. We'll have to wait and see. Yeah, nice. Um, Darren, what about you? Um, oh, I completely forgot. Did anybody watch Gladiators? That was back. Oh, week. it was awesome. <laughs> How good it was, was that? It was great. It was so, right back to the 90s when I was oh, a student. Oh, I loved, loved it. it. It just didn't yeah. have the, the music in the games. That's the only thing that was missing, the old music. But, um, and it didn't have Jet in either, which was no. the only reason to watch. Some of us are more upset than others about that. Um, <laughs> well, sorry. I'll tell you what. <laughs> 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 All right, I'll let's let's I'll leave now. it there. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, I'm doing the big <laughs> reeve rubbing of the thighs as we speak. <laughs> yeah. Shooting stars. Um, so it's my last week of work next week before a week off, which would be nice because I've not been off since November time. And uh, a friend of ours having some birthday drinks tomorrow. And it's a traitor's finale next week as well. So lots to look forward to. Oh, fun. Good. Great. Um, we'll be back next Friday and we can maybe talk about something that I'm going to be and Richard are going to do together in the week. Can't say anything mm-hmm. else. Oh, yeah, we're looking forward to this. No, we'll, we'll, we'll report back next Friday. I'm very jealous. Enjoy yeah. it. Enjoy it. See what's happening. We'll talk about it then, hopefully. Um, but for now, Jim, thank you very much for your time and your efforts. And I don't know what else I was saying. Um, it's because we've... <laughs> it's because we got rid of the socials bit. I always think, in my head, I think I'm going to say something else and I forget. There's nothing else to say. If, you, if you've been affected by any of the issues raised in this programme... <laughs> right, gentlemen, thank you very much and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Bye. You've been listening to the official podcast of xboxhub.com. You have found all the notes of this show at www.thexboxhub.com slash podcast. You can also check out our social feeds on Instagram and Twitter at the Xbox Hub and search for the Xbox Hub on Facebook.